We're now moving from the Netherlands and traveling virtually to Jerusalem, Israel, and to Susan Hazan, who is today celebrating uh, a birthday. So she can't join us live. Um, so we'll watch her pre-recorded um, presentation. Uh, Susan is a dear colleague of mine, and she's a cultural heritage and museum professional, combining both academic research on the digital object with her work in the public cultural sector. She believes that digital resources not only sustain rich narratives, but enable them to fold into cultural heritage. However, they are also able to unwrap from the physical objects to open up new ways of self-directed learning and creative ways of thinking about the past and present. So Susan will be performing a presentation on silence matters. It is time to speak up, focusing, focusing on the actions to be taken now in the cultural heritage sector. Good evening, everybody. And thank you to the organizers inviting me to this very important moment to think about what matters now. And I want to share with you what matters to me and I think that silence matters. So I just want to read out my personal statement. The cultural heritage sector has an institutional responsibility to foster inclusion, diversity and good practice in the curatorship of multiple narratives to realize the potential of all communities. So I would say that keeping silent is not an option. We need to make our voices heard and we all have a critical role to play in addressing systematic racism, xenophobia and intolerance. So I'm sharing here tonight uh, 10 ideas that I hope will help us think a way uh, to reframe our thinking. So what's in a name? Thomas Jerusik, a member of the Kenai First Nations in Southern Alberta, graduated with an honors degree in political science and was a Students Union's Indigenous Affairs Commissioner. And he led the campaign to drop the controversial name of the university's sports team, the Redmen. Perhaps this was the inspiration that, that focused the ongoing discussion that now uh, reviews the famous Redskins Washington football team. Could it be the domino effect? Rethinking the curriculum. A group of six formers from London are campaigning to change the way British colonial history is taught on the national curriculum, and they all have family connections to the British Empire and feel that their past is not being taught properly in school history lessons. And one of the students said, my parents had taught me stuff about my own heritage, so when I saw it being actively absent in the classroom, it made me feel like I was absent in history itself. New leadership. New Caledonian-born Emmanuel Carachol is the first canic to head the key Branly Jacques Chirac Museum in Paris. Museums, he, he says, must find a way back for works that were looted during colonialism. And there's a whole historical work being done, he argues, on the collections in order to identify precisely the pieces that could possibly be the object of restitution because they were taken in context of violence that we cannot tolerate today. So return of sacred artifacts is critical. And a wonderful example is the um, uh, Manchester Museum, who's now returning uh, objects, sacred objects, stolen from indigenous Australians nearly a century ago. Um, Majubhaja Jana from the Gandhi Leader Group flew to the UK from Australia and described the ceremony as extremely emotional, spiritual and powerful, cathartic and healing, he added. They were taken from us, stolen from us, but it's important now that we're here to take them home. And this project marked the 250th anniversary of Captain Cook's first voyage to Australia. So refute institutional misconduct, and this is as much about people as it is objects. And here's an opportunity for you to sign the open letter to New York City's cultural institutions. And it starts, we the people representing current and former black and brown employees, as well as other people of color and their allies as a coalition from the various institutions in New York. Um, find this and sign it, because this is your opportunity to find your voice. Recognize the trophy cases of imperialism. Uh, while many US museums have made moves towards the field, what the field calls diversity, equality and inclusion, Mas Sanfor called for much greater change. It's critical that we move past education, um, identity politics, she said. It's not enough to hire an indigenous curator, it's not enough to have one black person on your board. Museums as we know them have to be abolished. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but at least she's starting the discussion. I don't want my voice added to a museum that often trophy cases for imperialism. And I've often thought that as I walk around the British Museum. And Mars Safra is an artist, organizer, and educator. Bundles. Uh, the Glenfall um, uh, 
bundles which are not celebrated each year, such as those in museum collections, represent a break in the communication line, a break in the history, in this case of the Nitsitschapi, and a break in the spiritual and eco ecological balance of their world. And I'm quoting here Glenbow Museum curator Gerald Connerty, uh, the director of Indigenous Studies. I became friends with the Weasel Moccasin family and began to understand the significance of holy bundles to people, not to a foreign culture. They in turn began to see me as an individual who was beginning to understand and respect their culture and their holy bundles. And they now asked that I fulfill some obligations to their culture. I was encouraged to prepare a daily smudge for the bundles while, I, while, it, res, while it resided in Glenbow. And I was expected at various ceremonies and requested more and more often to lend religious objects. Subvert. I'm sure you all remember the unco uncomfortable proximity, the, pro the website of the Mongol Tate. Um, this is worth looking up. It's from 2000 and it's an amazing project um, about what goes on behind the scenes at the Tate. So my last comment is speak out. And I'm quoting a statement from the Smithsonian Secretary Lonnie G. Bunch. And he's actually quoting Frederick Douglass. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are people who want crops without plowing the ground. The struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both, but it must be a struggle. So I believe, number 10, your silence matters. Don't keep silent. Thank you.